Welcome. This is today's Daily Doom. We're all connected to each other biologically, to the Earth. All right, it's just after midnight, uh, April 1st, 2011, and we're going to look at uh, Fairwinds Associates' website today. And um, this website here, these guys are nuclear engineers, and this, this guy right here, Arnold Gunderson, he was a chief nuclear engineer that um, managed over a bunch of facilities uh, identical to the, to the Fukushima plant. So he's going to actually talk about how it works today. So this is, a, their, their website's a little messed up right now, I don't know what's going on with it, but I was clicking on some of their stuff here. Oh, that, that's working now. Okay, they're starting to get these back up and running now. Okay, good. Uh, their website was down a little bit. But, yes, yeah, so you want to come check out their website. They're going to have a lot of different information about what's really going on. The media will spin it to their advantage, whereas, um, you know, scientists and stuff in the area, uh, in the space, they'll actually, you know, share their interesting stuff. So not going to tell any jokes on you guys, not not trying to trick you guys anything today, you know. I'm sending much love to each one of you out there. Um, and uh, we're going to go ahead and watch, watch a the latest video. They just put this out like two hours ago. And uh, we're going to check that out. And it actually shows how they work inside these pools and uh, what what actually has gone wrong and, and, and how we can maybe fix that. So um, very interesting people to sort of uh, to, to check out. Uh, it's always good to go to the good resources. Don't believe what I say. Don't believe what um, everything you see on TV. Do research for yourself and come to your own conclusions, you know. Um, it's good to have a nation of thinkers instead of just a nation of workers who don't, who don't question anything. So I'm always questioning that what I that in which I see and, and try to find the truth in things and so I don't always don't always trust what I first see but anyways this is pretty interesting information um, we'll we'll take this it's gonna be a short video today but um, have yourself a good one have a productive uh, April and we'll see you next time much love hi I'm Arnie Gunderson from Fairwinds Associates it's Thursday March 31st and you'll probably notice that this is the second update of a day. Normally I update you every other day, however, some, some disturbing video has shown up on Ustream that I wanted to talk to you about. First off, a little bit about my background. Um, I used to be an executive in the nuclear industry and one of the divisions I ran built nuclear fuel racks for boiling water reactors. So nuclear fuel racks are something that I know a little bit about. Nuclear fuel racks look like this. This is a square cans at the bottom of essentially a swimming pool and each can is designed to handle one nuclear fuel bundle and that's the glowing thing you see sliding into the into the can now the the wrapper around those cans it has boron in it and that's designed to prevent a nuclear chain reaction from occurring in the pool you don't want a chain reaction to occur in the pool that should occur in the reactor now what happened at Fukushima was when the whole site lost power, at Fukushima 4, there was no reactor operating. All the fuel had been removed and was in the fuel pool. Now, normally the pools are cooled. However, they lost power, so there was no longer any, any cooling. It appears that the pools boiled dry. The uh, roof blew off the building. That indicates that hydrogen was built up from uh, something called the Zircaloy water reaction that had to occur at temperatures over 2200 degrees. Now, after that, the Fukushima staff has been attempting to pour water into that reactor. And you can see in this picture that up the side of the building is a, uh, is a hydraulic device. It's actually designed for pumping concrete that's pumping water up and over the roof and pouring water into the nuclear fuel pool. Well, this picture is undated, but it, when it was taken, it clearly shows that there's no water in the pool. Now, if you look, there's a, there's a green, long green device, and that's the refueling bridge. Normally that glides along on rails above the pool, and the pool is that crystal clear water that you normally are used to seeing. Well, after the explosion, it has collapsed and is lying in the pool. Now, between seconds 33 and 37 on this video, 
you can see little boxes. And the little boxes are just to the left of that green bridge. The boxes are in air. Those boxes are the top of nuclear fuel racks. They're supposed to be under 30 feet of water. They're not. Now what that means to me is a couple things. First off, the top of the nuclear fuel is exposed. Perhaps all the nuclear fuel is exposed, but certainly the top is. You can see steam coming up, but not from the top of the fuel. Down further in the cavity, there's steam coming up. So the water that they're spraying in is hitting the nuclear fuel and creating steam, but it's not filling that swimming pool. Now, the water has two purposes, cooling, but also shielding. So that means that the nuclear fuel is unshielded. That emits gamma rays, and the gamma rays go up into the sky, bounce off of air molecules through something called sky shine, and rain back down on the site as a background radiation that's much higher than normal. That makes work on site really difficult, and it makes work on that refueling pool almost lethal. Now, the other thing it means to me is that the nuclear fuel itself is extraordinarily hot, and the plutonium inside can become volatile. Now, I spoke yesterday in the, in the uh, earlier update about cerium being discovered off-site and plutonium being discovered, and the fact that the nuclear fuel pool does not have water in it, to me, indicates that it might be a clean path for those heavy elements to be escaping from the building and being discovered off-site. Now, I would recommend, based on this, that the evacuation zones should be pushed back further because of these heavy elements being released, as well as the cesium that was also in those, in those racks. Um, it does have some serious consequences. Um, as this situation develops, and perhaps more clear pictures uh, are, are available, I'll update you again. Thanks again. Welcome. This is today's Daily Doom.